these are not an action-reaction pair. These two forces can be totally different. Look at the symbols, FHC, FHG. What would be the partner, the Newton's third law partner of this force? What's the equal and opposite force? It would be the force on the cart by the horse. It's this one. This arrow and that arrow are equal and opposite. That's Newton's third law. FHC, I can write it symbolically. FHC equals minus FCH. That's a mathematical statement of Newton's third law. Whenever you write down Newton's third law, you're always just flipping the symbols that you use and putting a minus sign to indicate the direction. So why was the horse wrong? The horse was thinking, these two arrows cancel, and therefore I don't go anywhere. The horse wasn't thinking about the other forces in the problem. And more important, this force doesn't act on the horse. It acts on the cart. So as far as the horse is concerned, it's the only thing in the world. We all live in the center of our own worlds. And what you care about is these two forces, the forces acting on you. By the way, I'm neglecting gravity and other forces in other directions. I'm only interested right now in the motion in this direction. So what makes the horse go? Well, the horse has to push hard so that the ground pushes hard back on it. The horse needs this arrow to be bigger than that one. Then there will be a net forward force. And Newton's second law says net forward force, cart will accelerate. Similarly, when you look at the, sorry, horse will accelerate. Horse is connected to the cart. What does the cart feel? The cart feels the force on the cart by the horse, which is forward. It probably feels a frictional force backwards, the force on the cart by the ground. There's no intrinsic reason why these have to be equal and opposite. These are just two different forces, one from the horse, one from the ground. And in fact, if the horse is pulling hard and there's not much friction, this arrow will be bigger and the cart also will accelerate. They're tied together. They'll accelerate together. So Newton's third law is a law of physics which we're not going to be plugging numbers into it. It's not like F equals MA, which we'll use kind of to compute things with. It's a conceptual law, which we will use quite often in order to compare or connect forces on one object to forces on another. So tug of war. We can compare forces on the two teams. Car crash. Think about a car crash. There's a big old SUV and some little dinky foreign mo model, and they crash into one another. What's going to happen? Well, a big heavy SUV is going to whack the poor little car, and it's the little car that suffers all the damage. So you say, is that consistent with Newton's third law? Is you know, A lot of people's intuition about Newton's third law is wrong. Your intuition says big car applies a big force to the little car. Newton's third law is correct. The force on the big car by the little car is equal and opposite to the force on the little car by the big one. The forces are equal and opposite. If you focus your attention on one of them, F equals MA, the small mass gets a big acceleration. It changes its velocity a lot. So that's what your intuition was about, was about the change in motion, not the forces involved. Newton's third law. Force on A by B is equal and opposite to the force on B by A. It's a simple statement about forces on different objects. Together with Newton's first and second laws, the three laws together form the basis of dynamics. They allow us to understand the behavior of objects under the influence of forces. Newton's first two laws, especially Newton's second law, is what you use when you're focusing your attention on one object. You need to know the net force on it to use Newton's second law. Once you know the net force, the law tells you how it's going to behave. If you really want to work a problem with Newton's second law, and that's what we're going to be doing a lot of in this course, you need to know all the forces acting on it. Right? It's the net force in Newton's second law. So in this tutorial, I've been a little bit sloppy. I've been drawing pictures with some of the forces acting on an object, the ones that I was interested in. If we really want to describe properly and, and uh, numerically accurately what's going on, we have to include every single force. And we'll draw a careful picture. We need to know their magnitudes and their directions. And then you can apply Newton's second law and compute the motion. Where do those forces come from? Sometimes you can just 
look at the problem and see, and other times we will make use of Newton's third law. We will say the force in this problem is the action-reaction partner of a force that we knew about in another related problem. So Newton's third law is something that we'll use quite often as a way to connect the story between two different physics problems.